Welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr. Southern. This is part four of the video on probabilities with Venn diagrams. And uh, in this example here, I'm going to be doing one that's got three events. So here we go. Um, so events A, B and C, the three things, are defined in the same sample space. Uh, a and C are mutually exclusive. It means A and C can't happen at the same time. Uh, and A and B are independent. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three sections of a Venn diagram here, like so. I'm going to label them A, B and C. A and C aren't intersecting because they're mutually exclusive. Um, I'm also told that events A and B are independent. Uh, and then I've got given that probability of A is one quarter, the probability of C is one seventh, and the probability of A union B equals three fifths. Um, I've got to find. Uh, I've got to find some stuff. Now, my advice to you is, if you're ever given information like this for a Venn diagram and you're not sure where to start, just start off by writing out some of the formulae that you know um, and filling in um, the bits that you're told from the question. Um, so, for example, um, I'd be starting off by writing out that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection of A and B. And thinking about which of those things I know. Well, I know that A union B is 3 fifths, so I can replace that with 3 fifths. I know that the probability of A is 1 quarter. I don't know the probability of B, so I'll just put that there. Now, I've not been given the probability of the intersection of A and B, but I have been given that A and B are independent. Now what that means, if I do that over here, it means that the probability of the intersection of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Now I know the probability of A is one quarter, so it would be one quarter multiplied by the probability of B. So I'm just going to write that in here now, that the intersection is the probability of A one quarter multiplied by the probability of B, which works because they're independent. So what that means then is that on the right hand side of my equation here I have three quarters the probability of B because I've got probability of B minus a quarter of it, three quarters of it, um, and on the left hand side I'm going to have three fifths subtract uh, one quarter which is um, 7 over 20. And if I then divide that um, I get the probability of B, I think, to be 7 over 15, but I will just quickly check that. Yeah, 7 over 15, lovely. So I've got the probability of B um, to be 7 over 15. Um, so I've done that. Um, let's look at what else um, I've just got to work out here. Uh, I need to work out the intersection at some point. Okay, so um, now that I know the probability of A, or sorry, I was given the probability of A, I know the probability of B, I can now work out the probability of the intersection because I know that the intersection is one quarter times the probability of B, or the probability of A, multiplied by the probability of B. So if I do one quarter multiplied by 7 over 15, I get 7 over 60, which is the intersection of A and B on my Venn diagram. So let's just start filling some stuff in then. So I've just worked out there that the intersection of A and B is 7 over 60. I was given that the probability of A was 1 quarter, so if I do 1 quarter subtract 7 over 60, I'll get the bit that goes just in A, which is 2 fifteenths. Um, and at the moment, um, with what I've got, I don't have enough information um, to work out this bit um, of B um, until I look at the next part of the question. Um, so let's just finish this first part of the question. Um, a union C um, was um, just going to be, because A and C don't intersect, the probability of A union C is just the sum of their probabilities. We don't have to worry about taking away the intersection because there is no intersection. So it's just going to be 1 quarter plus 1 seventh, which is just 11 over 28. Uh, the probability of B we worked out earlier, so I'll just jot that in as 7 over 15. And the probability of the intersection, 
we work it out as well to be 7 over 60. Um, so there's a little bit of help in the question there in that the order that you're being asked to do things suggests an order in which you might start to solve it. Okay, finally then, we're given that the probability of B union C is 19 over 35. So the total of this circle and this circle on my Venn diagram is going to be 19 over 35. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to label a little X here and then I'm just going to do a little separate boxed off section of the board here to do the working out so it doesn't get confused with other stuff. Now, the total of all this is 19 over 35. I know the probability of C is 1 seventh. Add the 7 over 60 bit of B that I know. Add the X, which is what I've used to just donate this bit that I don't know at the moment. But we know that those three things sum to 19 over 35, uh, because that's what this means, the probability of B union C. So if I start with 19 over 35, and I subtract 7 over 60, and I subtract 1 over 7, um, I get 17 over 60, which is x. So I'll just erase that. So erase that x and replace it with 17 over 60. Uh, determine whether or not um, a and B are independent. Right, okay. So the probability of B, I need this section here. I've got the probability of B um, that I found earlier to be 7 over 15. Um, so if I do 7 over 15 and subtract these two bits, I'll get the last bit of B, which is also the intersection. Uh, so I've got probability of B, so 7 over 15 and if I subtract 7 over 60 and subtract 17 over 60, I get 1 over 15 in here. Um, and just for completeness, look, we've got the probability of C is 1 seventh. So if I do 1 seventh, subtract 1 over 15, I get 8 over 105 um, that goes in here. Um, right, and I'll just check then what would go on the outside. This is just me for completeness, really. Um, I make it 34 over 105 on the outside. Now, what we're actually being asked to do, we're being asked to determine whether or not B and C are independent. Now, B and C would be independent if the total of the B multiplied by total of C um, it, it equals the intersection bit here. So, uh, I'll do this in a different colour down here, I'll do this in a nice purple. So the probability of B multiplied by the probability of C would have to equal the intersection if they're independent. The probability of B is 7 over 15, the probability of C is 1 over 7. Multiply those two, you get 1 over 15, and 1 over 15 is the intersection, which means therefore that B and C are independent. There you go. I laboured over that bit, but quite a bit to do. Hopefully that made sense. I'll see you in the next video.